Welcome to England. Imagine standing where kings and queens once walked, touching stones placed by Roman soldiers, and walking through halls where medieval knights feasted. Every path in this region leads to a story, and every stone holds secrets from the past. What draws millions of visitors to this ancient kingdom each year? Perhaps it's the mystery of Stonehenge, where massive stones have stood guard for over 5,000 years. Or maybe it's the charm of honey-colored villages in the Cotswolds, where time seems to move more slowly. England sits at the top of the British Isles, a land where history comes alive at every turn. Here, Roman walls stand next to Gothic cathedrals, and medieval castles share skylines with modern architecture. It's a place of remarkable contrasts. Whether it's your first visit or you've been before, England's treasures will give you memories that last a lifetime. So, how well do you know this ancient kingdom? Here's a quick question. Which English cathedral has the largest medieval stained glass window in the world? Write your answer in the comments below. Before we start our journey, take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you won't miss our upcoming videos. Your support helps us create more in-depth travel content and uncover even more amazing places for you to explore. Now let's begin our journey through this remarkable country and discover its most wonderful places. First up is one of the world's most mysterious places, Stonehenge. Standing proudly on Salisbury Plain for over 5,000 years, these massive stone circles have puzzled and amazed people for generations. As you approach Stonehenge, you'll first notice how it stands alone on the vast plain, commanding attention against the wide Wiltshire sky. The massive stone pillars, some weighing up to 25 tons, create a perfect circle that has survived since the late Stone Age. But this isn't just a ring of rocks. It's one of humanity's greatest mysteries. The builders of Stonehenge showed remarkable skill and determination. They transported enormous bluestone rocks from Wales, nearly 140 miles away, using only the most basic tools and sheer human effort. Even today, engineers are amazed by the precision with which these ancient people placed and balanced these massive stones. Walking around Stonehenge, you'll notice how the monument changes with the light and weather. On bright days, the stones stand dark against the sky, their surfaces textured with thousands of years of weathering. During sunset, they take on a golden glow, and you can imagine why ancient people might have seen this place as magical.
the site appears to have been carefully designed to align with the movements of the sun, particularly during the summer and winter solstices. Even today, people gather here to watch the sun rise perfectly over the heelstone during the summer solstice. As you stand before these ancient stones, you can't help but feel connected to the countless generations who have stood here before you. It's a memory that will last you a lifetime. From ancient mystery, we move to the Tower of London, standing proud along the River Thames. This fortress has been a palace, prison, treasury, and home to the crown jewels, all while witnessing some of England's most dramatic moments. As you cross the moat and pass through the mighty stone gates, you'll feel like you're stepping back in time. The White Tower, built by William the Conqueror nearly 1,000 years ago, rises before you. This is where kings and queens lived, where prisoners awaited their fate, and where the famous yeoman warders, or beefeaters, still guard royal treasures today. Inside the Jewel House, you'll find the Crown Jewels, perhaps the tower's most spectacular attraction. The famous Cullinan Eye Diamond, the largest clear-cut diamond in the world, sits proudly in the Sovereign's scepter. But the tower holds darker stories, too. Two young princes disappeared within these walls in 1483, leading to one of history's greatest mysteries. Famous prisoners like Anne Boleyn, Lady Jane Grey, and Sir Walter Raleigh spent their final days here before meeting their fate on Tower Green. One of the tower's most fascinating traditions continues today, the ravens. Legend says that if the ravens ever leave the tower, the kingdom will fall. That's why at least six ravens are kept here at all times, cared for by the raven master. You can often see these intelligent birds hopping around the grounds, their glossy black feathers shining in the sun. The tower's walls have witnessed centuries of history,
You can walk the same steps as medieval kings, see graffiti carved by prisoners hundreds of years ago, and marvel at suits of armor worn by kings in battle. As evening approaches, you might catch the Ceremony of the Keys, a lock-up ceremony that has taken place every night for about 700 years. It's a reminder that the tower isn't just a museum, it's still a working fortress, guarding royal treasures and keeping ancient traditions alive. From London's historic heart, we journey north to the Lake District, where nature has created one of England's most beautiful landscapes. This is a place of mirror-like lakes, dramatic mountain peaks, and peaceful valleys that inspired poets and artists for centuries. The Lake District spreads across Cumbria, covering nearly 1,000 square miles of stunning countryside. Each valley, or dale as they're called here, has its own character. Windermere, England's largest lake, reflects mountains in its calm waters, while boats glide across its surface. Nearby, Grasmere Village sits like a jewel among green hills, once home to the poet William Wordsworth, who called this area the loveliest spot that man hath ever found. The landscape here was shaped by ancient glaciers, creating deep valleys and craggy peaks. Scafell Pike, England's highest mountain, challenges hikers with its rocky slopes while offering spectacular views across the national park. On clear days, you can see all the way to Scotland and even catch a glimpse of the Isle of Man in the Irish Sea. Villages in the Lake District seem to grow naturally from the landscape. Their grey stone buildings blend perfectly with the surrounding fells, which is a local word for hills. In Ambleside, Grasmere and Keswick, you'll find cosy tea rooms, outdoor equipment shops, and traditional pubs serving hearty local food. Perfect after a day of exploring. So the beer bat, we have a sweet beer, a strong darker ale, and a one that's in between. So yeah, it's different consistencies, but very nice indeed. Even better when it's free. 
think I've just fallen in love with the retro brand Copan Paxi. The lakes themselves offer endless possibilities for adventure. You can take a steam-powered boat across Ullswater, watching the mountains slide past as ospreys fish in the clear waters, or rent a rowing boat on Derwent Water, finding quiet corners where it feels like you're the only person for miles around. For many visitors, the Lake District's magic lies in its changing moods. Morning mist transforms valleys into mysterious wonderlands. Afternoon sun makes lake waters sparkle like diamonds. Rain, and yes, there's plenty of it, brings out the deep greens of the landscape and fills the waterfalls with thundering power. It's amazing how nature created such a perfect place of lakes and mountains. But our journey is just beginning. Next, we're heading to one of England's most beautiful. You won't want to miss what's coming up next. From the natural beauty of the lakes, we travel east to York, where the magnificent York Minster reaches toward the heavens. This cathedral isn't just a building, it's a masterpiece of human creativity that took 250 years to complete. As you approach York Minster, its size takes your breath away. The twin towers of the Western Front rise as high as a 16-story building. The central tower soars even higher, making it one of the tallest medieval structures still standing. But it's not just the size that impresses, it's the detail. Hundreds of stone carvings decorate the walls, each telling its own story from the Bible or English history. Step inside, and your eyes are drawn upward to the vaulted ceiling, spreading like stone lace above your head. Below the cathedral, you can explore an unexpected treasure. The Undercroft Museum reveals the building's Roman and Norman foundations where you can touch stones laid by Roman soldiers almost 2,000 years ago. One of the Minster's most distinctive features is the Chapter House, an octagonal room where church officials have met for centuries. Look up at its ceiling. There's no central column holding it up, just perfectly balanced stone creating a star-shaped vault. The medieval stone masons who built it knew exactly what they were doing, 
even without modern engineering tools. The Minster's towers offer adventurous visitors a chance to see York from above. Climb the 275 steps of the central tower and you're rewarded with views across the city's medieval street pattern and out to the Yorkshire countryside. Time your visit right and you might hear the Minster's bells ringing out across the city, a sound that has marked time for generations of York residents. Now we journey south to the gentle beauty of the Cotswolds, where villages of honey-colored stone nestle in rolling green hills. This region looks like it's stepped straight out of a fairy tale, where each village seems more charming than the last. The Cotswolds cover nearly 800 square miles across six counties, but everywhere you go, you'll see the famous Cotswold Stone. This limestone gives buildings their distinctive golden color, glowing warmly in the morning sun and turning rose gold at sunset. Each stone was cut by hand centuries ago, and many buildings still have their original roofs made of split stone tiles. Villages like Castle Combe, often called the prettiest village in England, time seems to have stopped somewhere in the 1600s. The main street winds down a gentle hill lined with perfectly preserved cottages. Their doors are decorated with roses and wisteria, while windows peek out from under stone mullions that have watched village life for hundreds of years. Borton on the Water, known as the Venice of the Cotswolds, shows how these villages grew up around the needs of daily life. Clear streams run through the village center, crossed by elegant low bridges. These waters once powered the mills that brought wealth to the region through the wool trade. Today, they provide a peaceful backdrop for afternoon tea or a gentle stroll. The market town of Chipping Campton gives us one of the finest examples of a Cotswold High Street. The curved street is lined with buildings spanning several centuries, each one different but all built from the same golden stone. Nature plays a vital role in the Cotswolds' charm. In spring, daffodils carpet the village greens.
summer brings roses climbing over cottage walls and lavender buzzing with bees. Autumn paints the woodlands in gold and russet, while winter mornings often see the stone buildings dusted with frost, looking like they're covered in sugar. Walking is the best way to discover the Cotswold secrets. The Cotswold Way, a 102-mile walking path, takes you through some of England's most beautiful countryside. From hilltops, you can see patchwork fields stretching into the distance, divided by dry stone walls built without any mortar, yet standing strong for centuries. From the Cotswolds, we travel north to a more dramatic landscape where Hadrian's Wall stretches across the country like a stone dragon's back. Built on the orders of Roman Emperor Hadrian in 122 AD, this massive structure marked the northwest frontier of the Roman Empire for nearly 300 years. The wall originally ran for 73 miles from coast to coast, crossing some of England's most dramatic landscapes. Today, you can still walk alongside large sections of it, touching stones that Roman soldiers placed nearly 2,000 years ago. At its height, the wall stood 20 feet tall and was so thick that two soldiers could pass each other while walking along the top. One of the best preserved sections is at Housestead's Roman Fort. Here, you can walk through the remains of Roman barracks, see where soldiers stored their weapons, and even visit the ancient communal toilets. The fort sits high on a ridge, and the views across Northumberland's rolling hills help you understand why the Romans chose this spot. Every mile along the wall, there was a small fort called a mile castle, with two turrets in between. This meant that soldiers could signal to each other along the entire length of the wall using fire or smoke. At Vindolanda, just south of the wall, Archaeologists keep finding remarkable objects that these soldiers left behind, including the famous Vindolanda tablets, thin wooden postcards that contain messages, shopping lists, and party invitations from nearly 2,000 years ago. The wall didn't just mark a border. It was like a small city stretched across the country. In places, the wall follows cliff edges, offering spectacular views across the Northumbrian landscape.
In winter, when the tourists are few and mist clings to the hills, it's easy to imagine yourself as a Roman soldier, watching the wild lands to the north. From Roman history, we travel south to the Jurassic Coast, where the cliffs themselves are pages in Earth's history book. This 95-mile stretch of coastline between East Devon and Dorset takes us on a journey through 185 million years of history, telling tales of ancient seas, lost worlds, and the creatures that once called them home. The most famous spot along this coast is Dirtle Door, a massive natural limestone arch rising from the sea. Shaped by millions of years of waves and weather, it looks like a giant sea dragon taking a drink from the crystal clear waters. The beach here, with its white pebbles and turquoise water, could easily be mistaken for a Mediterranean paradise. At Lyme Regis, known as the Pearl of Dorset, you can follow in the footsteps of Mary Anning, the pioneering fossil hunter who made some of the most important dinosaur discoveries here in the early 1800s. The town's ammonite pavement looks like someone has carved giant snail shells into the rock. But these are real fossils, the remains of creatures that lived here millions of years ago. Each layer in the towering cliffs represents a different period of Earth's history. It's like walking through time, with each step taking you millions of years into the past. Walking the southwest coast path here gives you some of England's most spectacular views with every turn revealing another breathtaking sight. Next up, we're at Cornwall's most magical site, St. Michael's Mount. Rising from the sea like something from a fairy tale, this tidal island crowned with a medieval castle has captured imaginations for centuries. What makes it even more special is how you reach it. At low tide, you can walk across a stone causeway, but when the tide comes in, the mount becomes an island, cut off from the mainland. According to legend, the island was once home to a giant 
who would wade ashore to steal cattle before being outsmarted by a local boy. Just one of many tales that add to the Mount's mystical atmosphere. Inside the castle, each room tells a different story. The Priory Church, built in the 12th century, stands at the heart of the complex. The Chevy Chase Room gets its name from its extraordinary frieze depicting a medieval hunting scene. In the library, a window seat offers what might be Cornwall's most spectacular view. On clear days, you can see for miles along the coast. Time your visit right, and you can watch local fishermen bringing in their catch in the Mount's tiny harbor. What makes St. Michael's Mount truly special is how it changes with the tides. It's like watching a piece of magic happen twice a day. Now, let's pick up the pace a bit. We're about to speed through some incredible places that might just end up on your travel bucket list. Standing like natural fortresses above the English Channel, the White Cliffs of Dover have welcomed travelers for centuries. These iconic chalk cliffs stretch for eight miles, reaching heights of up to 350 feet. Their brilliant white faces, created by tiny sea creatures millions of years ago, shine bright against the blue sea below. Walking along the clifftop paths, gives you views across to France on clear days. Below, ships pass through the busy strait, just as they have since Roman times. During World War II, these cliffs became a symbol of hope and resilience the first sight of home for returning pilots, and the last view of England for departing soldiers. Look closely at the cliff faces and you might spot seabirds nesting in the chalk or rare plants growing in sheltered spots. The grassland above the cliffs bursts with wildflowers in spring and summer, attracting butterflies and birds. South Foreland Lighthouse, standing proud on the cliffs, tells stories of sailors and smugglers from centuries past.
Oxford's skyline of towers and spires tells stories of learning spanning nine centuries. This city, home to the world's oldest English-speaking university, mixes medieval charm with modern academic life. Walking through Oxford streets feels like stepping into the pages of a story, which isn't surprising, as writers from Lewis Carroll to J.R.R. Tolkien found inspiration here. The Bodleian Library, one of the oldest in Europe, holds over 13 million printed items. Its Radcliffe camera, a round library building, has become Oxford's most photographed landmark. College quads offer peaceful havens, while the Ashmolean Museum houses treasures from around the world. Don't miss Christ Church College, whose grand hall inspired Hogwarts' Great Hall in the Harry Potter films. And the covered market, dating from 1774, offers a taste of local life among historic stalls and shops. Cambridge rivals Oxford in both beauty and academic achievement. The River Cam flows past college backs, under mathematical bridges, and beneath willows. Hunts glide along the river, carrying tourists and students, just as they have for centuries. King's College Chapel stands as the city's crowning glory, its late Gothic architecture and fan-vaulted ceiling representing medieval engineering at its finest. The chapel's choir, singing daily during term time, fills the space with ethereal sound. Trinity College's Wren Library, Cambridge University Botanic Garden, and the rapidly growing Science Park show how the city combines ancient and modern maintaining traditions while pushing boundaries of knowledge. And so, our journey through England's most wonderful places comes to an end. Which of these places captured your imagination the most? Let us know in the comments below which place you'd visit first and why. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more journeys through the world's most amazing destinations. Until next time.